there, Dr. Robert Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Now I wanted to um, do a video on the benefits of pea protein as a protein supplement in a powder form. The reason I want to do this video is because I had an email from um, uh, somebody who was a vegan and they asked me what protein powder they could take in order to be able to increase the protein intake in their diet. Now the answer that I gave them was that I would recommend taking um, a pea protein. Now if we look at legumes, uh, pea, peas are a legume, um, if we look at legumes uh, they do have some problems with them in terms of their amino acid profile. So it's not an obvious choice as a protein supplement, however if you are a vegan um, you are limited on the proteins that you can uh, consume because obviously whey protein is derived from dairy, casein protein is derived from dairy and egg proteins uh, obviously also an animal product as well. So in terms of protein powders that really limits you to soy or um, pea. There are you know other protein powders out there that you can get but those are the main ones that are available to vegans. Now if we look at legumes generally uh, legumes have um, uh, an amino acid profile that's been uh, characterized um, and this is available uh, on, on, on the internet. You can look up the amino acid profile of, um, of, of peas and legumes. Now legumes generally are all lo low in an essential amino acid called methionine. Now the exact amount of essential amino acids that humans require is contentious but there are between uh, eight and possibly 12 essential amino acids depending on what stage of life you are at but generally traditionally there are eight essential amino acids and methionine is one of those essential amino acids now for a protein to be able to provide adequate growth to a human the essential amino acids those eight essential amino acids need to be present in high enough amounts in order to be able to uh, satisfy metabolic activity um, if we look at legumes as a protein, they are a vegetable protein obviously, uh, they are classed as an incomplete protein because the methionine content of legumes is too low to provide um, suitable growth potential to humans. And this is the case for other animals as well, although the exact amount of amino acids different animals require does actually vary. So we're really talking about humans here. So the low methionine content uh, is a problem. <clears throat> now. If we look at animal proteins, animal proteins are called complete proteins because they contain all of the essential amino acids in the right in, in high enough concentrations to be able to provide uh, adequate um, growth potential through metabolic activity. So there's no problem with animal proteins. They are complete proteins and they all therefore um, provide uh, adequate growth. But the problem with vegetable proteins is that they are generally low in certain amino acids and this is why they're called incomplete proteins. If we look at grains, for example, grains are low in lysine um, and, and so so different different vegetables have different um, uh, problems with their amino acid profile in terms of, uh, of re requirements for human growth. Now this is unfortunate because vegetable proteins have got a reputation for being um, poor quality proteins and a lot of this reputation has come from studies that have um, analyzed the growth potential of these vegetable proteins on usually on animal in our, on animal models, it's obviously unethical to provide um, to inhibit the growth of humans um, by supplying them with particular controlled diets. So most of this work has been done um, with animals. Uh, now, what tends to happen is that um, animals, usually chicks or you know other other animal experiment models, chicks are, are, are used quite often. The growing chick will be supply, supplied with a particular protein um, and then the growth potential of those chicks will be compared to uh, controls that have uh, a known uh, controlled protein that contains all of the essential amino acids. And what tends to happen is if you supply them with just uh, protein, for example, from legumes, from pea protein, they have retarded growth um, compared to their normal requirements. And this is why vegetable proteins are seen as being uh, inferior. Uh, and this is true. The, the, the problem is that um, humans don't consume, generally don't consume proteins in isolation. So if you're consuming legumes, you generally consume the legumes with other foods. And those other foods provide um, the amino acids uh, that are missing from the legumes. The classic example that's always given by nutritionists is beans on toast. The beans are low in methionine. Um, 
but they have adequate amounts of lysine. The grains are low in lysine, but have adequate amounts of methionine. So if you combine the two together, you end up with a complete protein. So beans on toast, um, even though the individual components are incomplete proteins, the protein as a whole, the protein content of that meal is then adequate to provide um, growth to humans. So the first thing to say is that vegetable proteins are not inferior to animal proteins if they're consumed as part of a whole human diet. And I would suggest that if it, this is a protein supplement, uh, it's being used to supplement a diet that will contain um, other compounds that will contain the other, you know, other foods that will contain the other essential, essential amino acids. So I don't really see that as being a problem. Um, that's the first thing to say. Um, the second thing to say is that um, dispelling the myth of, of, of vegetable proteins as being inferior, there have been a number of studies that have compared vegetable proteins um, with um, animal derived proteins. And I will put a link to a study um, that is uh, that, has, that uses uh, a direct comparison between um, um, pea protein and whey protein. I'll put the link to that in the comments box directly below this video and you can click on it. Um, the study design uh, looked at subjects that were between the ages of 18 and 35. They were healthy male subjects uh, and it put the uh, the researchers put them on a resistance training program and the resistance training program uh, was concentrating on the upper body and particularly in their bicep muscle. Um, and the, the researchers measured uh, over the course of this 12 weeks, they measured the strength and the size of the bicep muscle of these subjects. Now, the subjects were divided into three groups. They all did the same resistance training program. One group was given um, 50 grams of uh, pea protein, and that was in two uh, 25 gram doses. Another group was given whey protein, again, 50 grams, but in two twenty and again in two 25 gram um, doses. And a third group did the resistance training without the protein. So there was effectively two uh, protein groups that took an extra 50 grams on top of their normal diet. And then uh, another group that didn't take any uh, protein supplement at all. Now, the results of the study uh, were very interesting. Um, both of the groups that took the extra protein had an increase in the size of their uh, bicep muscle and an increase in the strength of their muscle compared with the group that didn't take protein. So the first thing to say is that 50 grams of supplemental protein to people that are doing resistance training does appear to increase uh, uh, muscle mass and muscle strength. However, interestingly, there was no difference in the gains uh, in muscle size and strength uh, between the two proteins. In other words, the pea protein provided uh, adequate growth it provided the same growth as whey protein which is you know surprising um, when uh, if you if you research this um, people talking about the you know the inadequacy of vegetable protein and whey protein being the gold standard for building muscle well really when you test them back to back there's no difference between the gains that you get from taking pea protein and the gains you get from whey protein and this comes back to what I said earlier in the video uh, that these people were consuming a whole diet so the there were no limiting amino acids in the pea protein and therefore the nitrogen that the pea protein contained uh, was just as usable as the nitrogen in the whey protein and that provided um, muscle building effects um, for the subjects undergoing the training so 50 grams of extra protein supplements over 12 weeks with resistance training uh, does provide you with gains in muscle even if that protein is in um, the pea protein form so pea protein is an effective muscle building uh, supplement um, so therefore you know if you are a vegan and you're looking for uh, a supplement of protein pea protein would be suitable and that you would expect to get the same gains as you would uh, if you were taking uh, taking whey protein um, now, that's not to say that whey protein doesn't have some uh, benefits. There are, for example, uh, immune enhancing peptides in whey protein that aren't present in pea protein. So there are other effects that you get from whey protein. But in terms of its actual muscle building effects, the ability of the pea protein to build skeletal muscle uh, and its use as a, as a protein supplement, uh, as long as it's supplemented to a whole food diet where you're eating other amino acids, it appears to be um, just as beneficial. Now, the main amino acid in uh, in protein that seems to build muscle uh, is a an amino acid called leucine. Uh, now, leucine appears to be it's one of the branch chain amino acids. There are three branch chain amino acids: leucine, isoleucine, and valine. 
and they all appear to have muscle building effects but it really appears to be leucine that is the primary anabolic um, um, amino acid in protein now whey protein has high amounts of leucine which is why it has a reputation for being used uh, as a muscle building tool by athletes um, and if we look at pea protein, we do see that it does have um, less leucine than whey protein. Uh, per 100 grams, whey protein has about 10, um, it has about 10 grams of um, uh, leucine, um, whereas uh, pea protein has around about 6 grams. So not quite half, but much less. Um, but if we look at the study, and again, have a look at that study that I put the link to, uh, in terms of actual, the real world effects of creating, um, you know, m muscle gains, uh, there doesn't seem, seem to be a difference between pea protein and whey protein. So when you analyse this from a, a theoretical point of view, you would assume that whey protein would be a much superior protein for building, uh, for building muscle. Whereas in reality, uh, when you actually put it to the test, all things being equal, there is enough leucine uh, and the other branch gene amino acids in pea protein to be able to cause skeletal muscle growth. Um, and just another thing to say as well, if you are a vegan uh, and you want to increase your protein content of your diet, you don't have to take um, legumes as a protein supplement. You could increase the amount of legumes that you take uh, in your diet. Legumes uh, in their whole food form are very high in protein. Uh, and they are, um, you know, they're, they're, they're really cheap, they're very healthy foods, um, and they are, um, you know, obviously, um, there's various ways that you can take them, and they, 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 they are, I think, an underrated food, even for non-vegans, non uh, non-vegetarians, I don't think people eat uh, and, and consume enough legumes, they do have uh, a part in a healthy diet, and therefore, if you do want to increase the protein content of your diet, you don't have to take um, the the protein as a supplement. You can actually put the legumes, uh, increase the legume content of your diet. And to be to be honest, most vegans that I know do base their diets um, around legumes. They are a, a you know they are a very good food, um, and they do provide um, quite high amounts of protein um, and and other substances as well. You know they've got lots of fiber in them. Obviously, special unique types of fiber as well, and they do appear to have um, very um, some some of them do appear to have very unique health effects so to answer the question um, protein supplements for vegans I would recommend pea protein I have taken pea protein myself um, in my very early uh, training career when I started lifting weights um, the protein that I actually took um, was a, a Nutrisport uh, product uh, that was a pea protein um, and I think it was called 90 plus protein it was based on a pea protein and I think you can still buy it um, and um, you know it's it served its purpose for me very well uh, that was back when whey protein was very very expensive I was a student uh, I couldn't really afford whey protein um, and pea protein was um, to me was a, a much cheaper alternative um, and I did get get good gains in in, in muscle mass and muscle strength using that um, now that whey protein is much cheaper um, it's not really much more expensive than pea protein so if you're not um, a vegan um, you know there's no real problem with buying whey protein it's so widely available and so cheap but if you are a vegan and you don't you know you're not able to use that whey protein then there's nothing wrong with pea protein I've used it myself many people do use it uh, you know it does have a limiting amino acid but as I've said that is not really a problem if you consume it as part of a whole diet which you will do because it's a protein supplement and therefore um, to answer the question yes pea protein is a very effective protein and that's what I would recommend uh, vegans use um, to boost the protein content of their diet so I hope you found that interesting as always eat well stay healthy and protect yourself and I will see you soon for another video take care <laughs>